All right. Welcome to our 64th online gathering for congregational leaders across the country. This biweekly time, at least through November, is called Courageous Leadership and is sponsored by ELCA's coaching ministry. I am Jason O'Neill, part of your support team for ELCA coaching and one of your facilitators today. As a reminder, we're holding a brave space in these gatherings for you, the people of the church, to bring the truth of who you are and how you are doing. These conversations are an intentional step to live more fully into God's dream for us as the body of Christ. We invite you to bring curiosity and openness to this gathering and to discerning how and where spirit might be calling you forward as a leader in your life, your family, your work, your ministry, the community, and the world. What is God saying to you today and in this season of your life? We are bringing back our distinguished guest from July 21st, who doesn't need any further introduction, Dr. Brene Brown. So as a reminder, like last time, if today's topic has stirred up anything in you and you may want some extra support, uh, please contact us to work with a coach. Do not let cost be an obstacle. We will figure something out with you. And so questions for our small group sharing time, and we'll have about 25 minutes. Um, what resonates for you from today's presentation? Where might God be inviting you to be vulnerable as that birthplace of innovation, creativity, and change? Where might God be inviting you to lean into shame and dare greatly? And then what's your next most faithful step? Welcome back. So we've got a good five minutes or so. Would anybody like to share what was maybe shared in your group, of course, holding confidentiality. Shame got all of you, huh? <laughs> well, one of the things that we noted was that we may identify some of our shame triggers. We might identify some of the issues that we struggle with and they keep coming back. You'd think we'd learn the first time, but no, there's that repeat cycle <laughs> that it, it, it keep, it's something that's so, I find so deeply seated in me that it just, it, I might work on it and it comes up. I mean, I figure it out, but then I, there'll be another time when I got to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's that uncommon. <laughs> We heard in our group, um, the never being enough is something that, at least in um, the experience of people that, that were among us, isn't specific to women in clergy. Men in clergy experience it too. Mm -hmm. And and the sense that anything that happens uh, around the congregation, a key staff person leaves or something like that, then suddenly uh, there's this sense of, did I do something? Is it my fault? Um, instead of somehow us as, us as congregations and pastors being able to look at ourselves as a partnership where, you know, it's our relationship that makes us happy or successful or has issues, but need, you know, that we can work on, but it's not the responsibility of one individual for everything that happens. And, Mm -hmm. I, I think it's as a lay person, um, that certainly is my viewpoint, but I, I think perhaps we as, as laity have to have to be more outspoken about that, that everything isn't the pastor's responsibility. And therefore, when things don't go well, the pastor's fault. Mm -hmm. I wonder also connected to that, um, taking things personally. Sort of, I, I, sort of that was named as well. Um, and, you know, what does it look like if we think about what's, what's best for each person, what's best for the community, what's, be what's best for the pastor um, might lead to different answers than, well, you're leaving us or, right? I mean, that, the litany of things that happen. <laughs> um, and, you know, maybe God's calling them somewhere and we don't know it yet, or they don't know it yet. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking too a little bit about how 
shame is definitely put upon people and remembered and with it comes maybe either a lot of other feelings, emotions, anger, as well as maybe denying that shame has been a part of who we are. And we've just been deniers of that, whatever that is, but to recognize that there's a lot that other people can place upon you if you let them, but Mm -hmm. also just circumstances and history of, you know, with people of color and the things that they've had to live through and just how others have done that with no regard or little regard for who they are and that those stories keep living on and and adding to the shame load for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Janice. Maybe one more. I'm, I'm really struggling. Um, maybe part of it is I have a candidacy committee retreat this weekend. So I'm very definitely wearing my candidacy committee hat. Um, but I just think about how we set ourselves up in the church. Mm-hmm. And we work for Jesus. And we're supposed to pick up our cross. And we're supposed to sacrifice. And all of the things, even as we talk about call. Um, You know, we want to hear so often out of candidacy committees, we want to hear, I've thought about everything else and Jesus just won't let go of me. And so I guess I'm called to be a pastor. And I just think we set ourselves up in so many ways, right from the start. Um, and, And yes, there is call. And yes, it is vocation. And yes, it is occupation. But we don't, we aren't taught how to weave those together. Right. And so the shame and the guilt and the must do it right and must be perfect is is what we end up with as the measure that we measure ourselves against. Um, and and it is it is a calling, but it is an occupation. Um, it's what it, it's it's my paycheck. And how does that play out differently? And what does scripture teach me and what have I been taught along the way? Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Sunny. We could unpack that for, I don't know, six months. <laughs> well, thank you all. Um, I'd like to invite you to join us again on Wednesday, September 1st, as we spend a majority of our time in breakout rooms based on topics related to today's presentation, as well as the one from July 21st and courageous leadership. And you will be able to choose your, your topic and room that you go to. As we close, I invite you to continue sharing in the chat area what encouragement or faithful step you're taking with you today. And I would like to invite Jill to close us out. Yeah, thank you, Jason. And thank you everyone for sharing your insights. And um, the thing that Brene's sharing sparked in me was thinking about the narrative of shame that I think if, if you live long enough, that narrative takes root in in each of us and how do we feed and nurture those narratives of shame for ourselves and for people around us? How are we taught to do that versus the narrative of the gospel, this gift that we're given, right? And how can we bring that um, alongside to to interrupt? Um, Kimmy and I were talking in the the chat area about about interrupting things and how can we interrupt that narrative of, of shame or transform that narrative of shame into here's a story that I hear from Jesus about the truth of who I am. And so I leave that image with you as um, I share some words from the book of Jeremiah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out it ro- its roots to the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. And alongside of this, here is a quote from a Christian mystic named McThild of de Burg, 13th century Christian mystic. Fish cannot drown in water, birds cannot sink in air, gold cannot perish in the refiner's fire. This has God given to all creatures to foster and seek their own nature. Hmm. 
And so the question that is put alongside of these readings is, what has God given us today to help us be more fully ourselves? And so as we ponder that um, through the next few weeks, a closing prayer. Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through your loving creation and all of our siblings. Open our hearts to move through the narrative of shame. Open our hearts to compassion and inspire us to engage the gifts you have given us on behalf of loving and healing the world. May we go forth in courage, remembering that you go before us and will never leave or forsake us. And indeed, you love us and call us each by name. Amen. And with that, friends, God bless you. And may, may you know that you are beloved and gifted and invited into God's work of loving and healing the world. Yeah. And um, yeah, thank you for asking what scripture text that was. It was from Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8. Prophet Jeremiah. Thank you, friends. May you lean heavily into the narrative of the gospel.